Hello from the Windy City. Shai to Chicago. <laughs> I'm Dr. Jess. And I'm Dr. Jen. And this is Catching Up with Fat Candy. Let's catch up with the latest veterinary news. This program is brought to you by Mavora. Learn more at Mavora.com. Anyone who's ever had a dog knows how different one can be from the other. For example, they can be reserved or friendly, playful or calm, fearful or bold, and prone to bark or fetch or not. Research has shown that some of these differences are genetically determined, but even within dog breeds, where line breeding and artificial selection have led to the loss of much of the original genetic variation, the behavior of individuals can differ widely. Now, researchers show that part of the difference in temperament, in particular their energy level and fear-related behaviors, depend on acquired differences in the epigenome. Research has shown that some of these differences are genetically determined, but even within dog breeds where line breeding and artificial selection have led to the loss of much of the original genetic variation, the behavior of individuals can differ widely. Now, researchers show that part of the differences in temperament, in particular their energy level and fear-related behaviors, depend on acquired differences in the epigenome. Because the epigenome is known to depend on age, diet, exercise, training, socialization, and other environmental factors, it can impact the activity and wiring of nerve cells and thus alter behavior. Researchers at the University of California at Los Angeles quantified the epigenetic, genetic, and behavioral differences between 46 female and male dogs from 31 different breeds with an age between one and 16 years. Behavioral differences were quantified based on how the owners rated their dog in the Canine Behavioral and Research Assessment Questionnaire, a widely used standardized tool that consists of 101 questions. The results showed that the epigenome was a better predictor of behavior than the genotype at the sites they measured. Even within the most represented breed are Australian Shepherds with 12 dogs in the sample, only two of the 930 selected single locus polymorphisms examined were strongly associated with behavioral traits. Differences in DNA methylation between dogs explained a far greater proportion of observed variation in energy, attention seeking, non-social fear, and stranger directed fear than genetic differences did. These results imply that the epigenome helps to shape behavioral differences in dogs, even in tissues that aren't part of the nervous system. And now for some tips. Hello there, I'm Dr. Sarah Israel Gaines, a board certified veterinary surgeon specializing in orthopedics and total joint replacement for companion animals. Today, I want to delve into a groundbreaking procedure that redefines the way we care for our patients, total hip replacement or THR. This isn't just about surgery, it's about a transformation that can elevate your veterinary practice and patient outcomes to new heights. Total hip replacement is more than just an option for treatment. It's life-changing care for pets with severe hip dysplasia, osteoarthritis, congenital disorders, and other hip-related challenges. I'm here to shed light on why embracing this procedure can reset expectations around our patient's quality of life. Let's understand that THR transcends the boundaries of age. It's a viable consideration to restore mobility for pets in all stages of life. Whether it's hip dysplasia, osteoarthritis, or congenital disorders, when it comes to hip issues that limit our patient's comfort and ability to enjoy life with their families, THR could hold the key to unlocking a brighter future. It's not just for senior pets. The degenerative bony remodeling changes and soft tissue adaptations that can occur in young dogs with severe dysplasia can be dramatic. Earlier surgical intervention may be indicated versus waiting until the patient is older. A THR procedure can be performed as early as seven months of age in dogs with severe luxoid conformation. Most commonly, we see the THR procedure being applied to young dogs, nine to 12 months of age, with severe dysplasia disease, and young to middle-aged adults with significant osteoarthritis. During a THR procedure, the damaged joint structures are replaced with an artificial acetabular cuff, 
a femoral stem and femoral head implants specific to the needs of the patient. The acetabular cartilage is removed and new acetabular cup is positioned into the hip bone. The patient's femoral head is removed and the femoral canal is prepared and a prosthetic femoral stem is inserted into the canal. A modular femoral head with adjustable neck length is added to the stem to complete the joint reduction at appropriate joint tension. Cemented or biologic press fit acetabular and femoral implants are used depending upon surgical planning around patient factors. THR isn't just superior to medical management, it's a paradigm shift. Medical therapies are aimed at reducing the symptoms of joint pain, but do not address the underlying disease. Over time, osteoarthritis is expected to be progressive, resulting in a loss of joint function, reduced patient mobility, and worsening discomfort. It requires the pet parent to comply with lifelong and potentially costly medications, diet recommendations, and therapies. While medical therapy may offer temporary relief, THR offers the potential to restore normal joint function. That's what motivates many of the referrals we get, the possibility to free our patients from a lifetime of medications, therapies, and the potential complications that accompany them. While alternative surgical options like femoral head ostectomy, FHO, exist, THR stands as the gold standard and is now considered a routine surgical procedure. Remarkably, over 90 to 95% of pets who undergo THR are restored to normal joint function for the rest of their lives. THR is not only available for large breed dogs, but also for small dogs and cats who suffer from debilitating hip disease Micro and Nano THR provides these small breeds the same benefits of pain-free function with a hip that mimics normal joint biomechanics, as opposed to FHO, which often results in limb shortening and unpredictable outcomes with a functional lameness. Following a THR surgery, pets typically remain hospitalized for one to three days. Interestingly, many pets can start weight-bearing on their new hip on the same day as the surgery and exhibit significant improvement within two weeks. In the post-operative phase, effective pain management and exercise restriction is essential. Pet activities need to be closely controlled with activity restrictions during the initial six-week recovery period with good traction surfaces. Controlled leash-based exercise can be gradually extended between six to 12 weeks post-surgery. It's noteworthy that most pets are ready to return to their regular activities after approximately 10 to 12 weeks. So, if you're intrigued to learn more about referring for THR, Mavora Education is the place to start. I encourage you to enroll in a race-approved, on-demand, one-hour webinar called Foundational Knowledge for Referring Total Hip Replacement. And it's free if you use the code MAVORATHR at checkout. Thank you for joining me today. For more invaluable insights and tips, the Vet Candy team is on social media at MyVetCandy. Together, let's continue to elevate our standard of care and provide our patients with the best possible outcomes. And that's it for the show. Thank you for watching Catching Up with Vet Candy. If you want to stay up to date with everything Vet Med, then follow us at MyVetCandy.